Anaerobic digestion process fundamentals. In this segment, we are going to learn overview of the process, process microbiology, process kinetics, and important environmental factors that impact the process. Process overview. As we discussed earlier, anaerobic digestion is a collection of natural and biological processes in which anaerobic microorganisms break down organic materials in the absence of oxygen and produce biogas. So in general, this uh, process can be divided into three steps. Hydrolysis is the first step, where particulate materials get converted to soluble compounds that is suitable for further breakdown in the next step. The second step of degradation is known as fermentation or acidogenesis, where the products of hydrolysis such as simple sugars, amino acid, fatty acid, etc. break down further and produce final products of fermentation such as hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and acetate. The third and final step is methanogenesis. In this process, acetoplastic methanogens convert acetate into methane and carbon dioxide. Then another group of microorganisms known as hydrogen utilizing methanogens combine hydrogen and carbon dioxide into methane. The end product of methanogenesis is biogas a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. Let's discuss process microbiology a little bit more. We know that different groups of microorganisms with different function are needed in the anaerobic digestion process. So they also can be classified into three major groups. The first one is hydrolyzing and fermenting microorganisms, and they consist of a diverse group of anaerobic bacteria. The second one is hydrogen producing acetogenic bacteria. They convert volatile fatty acid into acetate, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. And the last one is two group of methane producing microorganisms. They classified as archaea. One of them is acetoclastic methanogens. They are the ones they acetate into methane and carbon dioxide. And the second group is hydrogen utilizing methanogens, also known as hydrogenotrophic methanogens. They produce methane from hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Methanogens usually have slow growth rate and they are very sensitive to environmental factors such as pH, temperature, etc. So there is a synotrophic or mutually beneficial relationship exists between methanogens and estrogen. Methanogens utilize the hydrogen produced by the estrogens. And this way, methanogens act as a hydrogen sink that allows the fermentation reaction to proceed. The conversion of propionate and butyrate to acetate and hydrogen requires that hydrogen be at low concentration in the system. That means a lower partial pressure of hydrogen is required for the reaction to be thermodynamically viable, or the reaction will not proceed. The lower the hydrogen concentration, the better the th thermodynamics of the VFA degradation. If methanogens do not utilize the produce hydrogen fast enough, the conversion of propionate and butyrate will be slowed. As a result, accumulation of volatile fatty acid in the system may reduce the pH. And as a result, we, as we know that methanogens are sensitive to pH, there will be a process upset. There is a possibility that process upset may occur. There is some organism that is considered as nuisance organism in the process, and they are sulfate-reducing bacteria. They can reduce sulfate to sulfide, and that is toxic to methanogenic bacteria at higher concentrations. So when feedstock-like wastewater contains significant amount of sulfate, that can cause a problem. And the solution is to add iron at control amount to precipitate that as iron sulfide. Theoretical prediction of methane gas production. So how much methane gas we can expect from a system can be calculated theoretically. And this we can do by using the COD mass balance equation. So theoretically, how much COD we put into the system is same as the COD that is coming out as effluent, COD that con get converted to VSS or bio, um, micro microorganism and the COD that gets converted to methane. 
So theoretically, COD of methane is the amount of oxygen needed to oxidize methane to carbon dioxide and water. And from the equation, we know that 2 molar of, of oxygen is required to convert methane to carbon dioxide and water. So that is 64 gram of oxygen per mole of CH4. That is 64 gram of COD per mole of CH4. And under standard condition, that equal 22.414 liter, the volume of methane per mole. If we convert that, that uh, say, assume 35 degree centigrade, then using using the ideal gas equation, V is equal to nRT by T, we get 25.29 liter, that is volume of methane per mole, volume occupied per mole of methane. So the CH4 equivalent of COD converted under anaerobic condition is 25.29 liter per mole by 64 gram COD per mole of CH4. That means 0.4 liter of CH4 per gram of COD. So with a given amount of COD in, we and if we can predict the COD removal rate and a net biomass synthesis yield, we can actually find out COD methane. And with that ratio, like 0.4 liter of CH4, theoretical ratio, 0.4 liter of CH4 per gram of COD, we can actually predict the amount of methane gas produced from that given amount of COD in the system. And the example of 17 Metcalf in 2013, 5th edition, actually illustrates this problem further. And by doing that example, you can get a further clarification. So there are some rate limiting concepts in the process kinetics and they are very important for the anaerobic process. One of them is hydrolysis conversion rate, that is VFA production versus utilization, as we discussed a bit earlier. For a stable digester operation, a low VFA concentration that is less than 200 gram per meter cube and a pH a little bit greater or equal to 7 is required. But if VFA production rate exceeds the methanogenic VFA utilization rate, increased VFA concentration may cause the pH to drop, and that may drop the and that may drop the methanogenic VFA utilization rate further, as methanogenic bacteria are sensitive to pH, and that led to more accumulation in VFA and more decline in methanogenic activity. As a result, the unstable process condition may occur. So high butyric acid accumulation cause sore odor under extreme digester upset condition. And methanogenic inhibition can occur when acetate concentration increases more than 3000 3, gram per meter cube. And the second rate limiting concept is soluble substrate utilization rate for fermentation and methanogenesis. So methanogenic growth kinetics are important for anaerobic process, we know. And for that sufficient retention time should be allowed so that washout does not happen. There should be enough methanogenic population in the system to utilize the produced VFAs. That's why we have to ensure a longer SRT or slug retention time in the process. At 20, 25 and 35 degrees centigrade, the washout values or minimum retention time for methanogenesis are 7.8, 5.9 and 3.2 days respectively. But usually a factor of safety of 5 days or higher are used to ensure that there is enough methanogenesis in the system and to ensure a stable operation for digester. Important environmental factors and operating parameters. There are several important environmental factors and operating parameters that have to be controlled in order to optimize the anaerobic digestion process. And we are going to discuss them one by one. Let's start with temperature. Temperature is important for microbial metabolic activities and overall digestion rate specifically for the rates of hydrolysis and methane formation. In general, anaerobic digestion process can occur within a wide range of temperatures. They can divide into three groups. 
So when the temperature is less than 20 degrees centigrade, it is called psychrophilic condition. When the temperature is between 30 to 40 degrees, 42 degrees centigrade, that's called mesophilic condition. And when it is 43 to 55 de degrees centigrade, it's known as thermophilic condition. In practice, most of the anaerobic digestion systems are designed to operate at mesophilic range that is between 30 to 38 degrees centigrade. And some of them are designed for thermophilic range as well, uh, that is between 50 to 57 degrees centigrade. And many modern anaerobic digestion plants actually have chosen thermophilic process. So there are some advantages as well as these advantages associated with thermophilic process and we are going to discuss them. Advantages are thermophilic process can destroy pathogens in the sludge or in the feedstock much more effectively than mesophilic process. It's a faster and efficient digestion process. It does better degradation and utilization of substrate and it gives better potential for solid liquid separation at the end. But the disadvantages are it has higher degree of imbalance. It has a higher energy demand due to high temperature and it has higher risk of ammonia inhibition. That's what we are going to discuss later in this segment. Solids and hydraulic retention times. Solids and hydraulic retention times, SRT and HRT, are the average times solids and liquids are held in the digestion process. Each of the anaerobic digestion reactions require a minimum SRT to be completed and if the design SRT is less, then the digestion process will fail. In a completely mixed reactor with no recycle, solid and hydraulic retention times are the same. In practice, for high rate digestion, the values of SRT range between 10 to 20 days. Alkalinity and pH in general, hydroxide and carbonates of calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium produce alkalinity in the wastewater. Alkalinity plays an important role in anaerobic digestion process as it controls the pH by buffering the acidity created in the acidogenesis phase. In a well-established digester, the total alkalinity ranges between 2000 and 5000 mg per liter. The volatile acid to alkalinity ratio should fall between 0.05 to 0.25 with a 0.1 value indicating a good buffering capacity. The growth of anaerobic process microorganisms significantly depends on the pH value of the system. Most methanogens prefer a narrow pH range and the optimal is reported to be 7 to 8. The optimum pH interval for mesophilic digestion is between 6.5 and 8 and the process is severely inhibited if the pH value falls out of this range. Toxic inhibitory substances. A wide variety of inorganic and organic toxic and inhibitory substances can cause anaerobic digester upset. The commonly present toxic substance in anaerobic digester include ammonia, sulfide, heavy metal, etc. Some other inhibitory substances are as follows. Oxygen and light. High amount of them could inhibit the activity of methane producing bacteria. Disinfectants such as herbicides, heavy metals or antibiotics found in poultry or chicken manure can also disturb the process if present in high concentration. Hydrogen sulfide and sulfuric acid, they are highly corrosive and could seriously affect different parts of the digester. A high ammonia concentration, which is a cellular poison. That could be caused by high nitrogen and ammonium concentration under certain circumstances. In such cases, substrate with a high nitrogen concentration like chicken manure or pig slurry should be diluted or mixed with another nitrogen poor substrate. Carbon and nutrients availability. Nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur are very important for the survival and growth of anaerobic digestion process organisms. Different micronutrients or microelements can also be called trace elements like iron, nickel, cobalt, selenium, molybdenum, or tungsten are essential for the anaerobic digestion process microorganisms. 
Insufficient amount of these nutrients and trace elements can cause inhibition and instability in anaerobic digestion process. The ideal carbon to nitrogen or CN ratio for anaerobic digestion ranges from approximately 20 to 1 to 30 to 1. To maintain an optimum methanogenic activity, desirable liquid phase concentration of nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur should be in the order of 50, 10 and 5 mg per liter. In addition, it is suggested that level for iron, cobalt, nickel and zinc should be 0 0.02, 0 0.004, 0 0.003 and 0 0.02 mg per gram acetate produced respectively. Product concentration. The stability of the anaerobic digestion process also depends on concentration of some products produced during the organic breakdown process like volatile fatty acid. We have discussed that earlier as well. During the acidogenesis process, different fatty acids like acetate, propionate, butyrate, lactate, etc. are produced. And excessive accumulation of this acid can drop the pH value inside the reactor when the buffering capacity of the digester is exhausted. The buffering capacity of the digester varies from digester to digester based on its microbial population. So with this slide, we'll close the segment this uh, process of our segment and move to the next one and we'll continue from there.